In this video, we will see what the end time prophecies say about the American continent in particular. There is really a whole lot of them, but the overall thread which unites them all is that America won't be one of those lands that will completely disappear, like for example it seems Japan, but still it uh, seems to be one of the more heavily affected regions. So different lands, different uh, regions will uh, face destruction to different degree and also in different way. For America, it won't be that much damage due to wars, although in few instances we read that uh, Chinese and maybe even other uh, soldiers will try to attack and will manage to set their foot on American soil for a short time. In overall, that uh, will be in no way as destructive as its own civil unrest caused by the local people and the worst of all will be the punishment by the elements, natural disasters and possible even a comet impact asteroid, which could possibly in its turn be the reason for a number of states to get submerged. There will be earthquakes and hurricanes as everywhere else for uh, details on that, please see the previous episodes. And as far as the hurricanes, Anton Johansson says that there will be at least five extremely powerful hurricanes and uh, describes uh, their route a little bit. The possible Asteroid impact together with the three days of darkness seem to be the two most uh, dramatic episodes for America. There won't be anything extra on the three days of darkness in this episode since uh, there was an entire video about that. It will be the same all over the world. Now the sheer number of American prophecies uh, talking about the asteroid impact means something by itself. The situation with the prophecies which I'm uh, using as a basis for this video is somewhat uh, different for America. Because here we are dealing with a very large number of uh, prophecies. And indeed it is uh, so many of them that if I uh, start making an endeavor to make some sort of scale and estimate which of them are reliable and which are not, that will take so long that the impact may happen before I finish. That's why uh, I will use a different uh, way of uh, estimating the probability of something happening a more simple way. The more prophecies talk about it, the more likely it is uh, that there are some genuine prophecies talking about the given thing. Because um, not every prophet will be real, but also on the other hand, surely there are some real seers amongst all those who claim to have uh, seen divine visions. It's impossible that there are no genuine seers in America. If God has certainly sent such people to the other lands, as we have proven in the previous episodes, he must have not forgotten America, because there are lots of good people living there. Now, first, in terms of this uh, possible major impact, a collision with a massive celestial body, I will use uh, words like asteroid for convenience only because uh, that's what most people use for extremely big stones flying from the skies but uh, even though i use such term i myself don't subscribe to the current so-called scientific cosmology and it seems the prophets uh, feel the same way although they use uh, this term or similar terms Still, they describe it as something sent by God and not as some random celestial piece of rock flying 
around on the wings of imaginary laws of physics. The impact is described as being uh, so strong that it not only is the cause for uh, submerging many states in America, but also even it is described as uh, being the cause of sinking in South America, Australia and Japan. That is according to the Nina prophecies, which are not yet verified, but uh, will be very easily verified even at the very beginning of the pre-tribulation. So if you follow the episode about those prophecies, you can check if they are coming true. And uh, then you will know what to expect during the Great Tribulation, where, uh, when this impact is supposed to occur. And speaking about Japan, that uh, seems to be the land connected with the biggest number of prophecies about uh, total sinking. Many people will be saved though and will relocate to Asia from Japan. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, countless prophecies talk about sinking continents and numerous uh, nations being completely submerged, but uh, almost none of them name them. It is only Nina who mentions the regions uh, which could be lost forever. She also says that in her visions, which uh, allegedly took place some 25 years ago, she was also informed that during that very same night, the same vision was shown to a few other people, one of which was uh, a man in America who will be also making a great endeavor on his part, she says, to inform people about everything he saw. And in the, amongst those uh, local Americans uh, who, whom I found to have uh, published visions about asteroid, a couple of them also say that they got the vision uh, practically together and the same people from other states reported the same thing. So Nina explained that the asteroid impact is not one of those events which is fixed in stone, like for example the third world war, which according to her and many others cannot be cancelled by any means. The asteroid impact can be cancelled and uh, she explained that there is a particular reason for it. The impact would be a, a result from uh, the people of America allowing their leaders to organize all kinds of satanic stuff and structures even in the other countries. Similar line of advice comes up even in a old German prophecy. Greetings across the great water. Powerful have you cultivated the land and abundantly filled the chambers and granaries. The land has my blessings, but now mark, the time of the visitation of Europe will become a time, a trial for you. Take care not to become tempered, to fall to false greediness, render help to the oppressed without business considerations, keep your house clean of the disputes of the old world, shun the war, conduct as men, not as brigands. And then God will remove from over your heads the threatening clouds and you will be a land of power. When I was previously browsing the European prophecies from a verified sources, there were so many of them telling in straightforward words that the satanic Babylon will make its headquarters in the land of America. Keeping at home an incubator for vipers cannot end in anything else but tears. So this is the special warning for America and even prophecy which according to mainstream sources is 1000 years old seems also to give hint about this possible impact. Before the comet comes many nations will be scored with want and famine. The great nation in the ocean that is inhabited by people of different tribes and descent by an earthquake storm and tidal waves will be devastated. It will be divided and in great parts submerged. The comet by its tremendous pressure will force much out of the ocean and flood many countries, causing much want and many plagues. Thank you. 
So this is a bit more detail, the names of the people who had the visions and also some uh, idea of the probably affected states. In general, uh, Florida and California are mentioned most often as uh, submerged. But if you live there and you try to figure out what will be possibly going underwater, it won't be that easy because it's not that whatever is lowlands now has a greater chance of uh, flooding because there will be shifting lands will be changing their altitude the earth's crust will be wrinkled and a big line in the middle of uh, USA will uh, get completely transformed the entire land shaft will fold itself in a completely new fashion it says that uh, there will be warning on the TV a few hours before that but not uh, many people will take it seriously anyway it's kind of a uh, good news, so to say, if really TV will be functioning during the Great Tribulation. Not that uh, TV is a good thing in general, at least currently, uh, but because that means uh, some sort of infrastructure and electricity for that to be still functional. There will be two types of warnings. The prophetic warnings, like this video, and then the identical dreams that will be given to the people by the Lord, to his own people, 20 hours prior to the impact. More and more righteous people will be receiving direct prophetic uh, dreams from the Lord in those times, but we have to be also careful because uh, the prophecies warn us that for every true seer there will be hundred who will be channeling uh, devilish spirits. They will be real channels, but it will be the vipers whispering in their ears, again under the name of Jesus Christ. And the way to recognize the black channels is that they will be preaching the mark of the beast and the Mary religion of the Dajjal while the real people of God, you can recognize them by their philosophy, they will be preaching you the same as the old prophets which I have included in this series. And the rest of this video will consist of uh, miscellaneous uh, prophecies about the end times in America. They are not necessarily uh, shown in the order in which the events are expected to happen. They are more like uh, additional local remarks. The main information about what will be happening uh, in America during the end times is in the previous episodes. Here, Nicholas van Rensburg has an interesting remark. Africans begin to overrun Europe and communists, which by the way uh, is an interchangeably used for the far left-wing parties, take over temporary power in Europe with the help of America. And he is uh, one of the most reliable sources. All these uh, centrally organized revolutions, where do you think is the center which organizes them? This is what he is pointing to. And this is what the German monk was uh, hinting at when he wrote Behave as men and not as brigands. So there are many prophecies about the destruction of uh, New York, really, really many of them. But anyway, almost or probably all coastal cities will be destroyed anyway, and all cities as such. 
But as far as uh, New York, will it really happen? As uh, Gottfried uh, from Verdenberg said even before the Third World War, we'll have to see about that. But the small detail which I found interesting in his uh, description, how if uh, you watch the spectacle from the sea, he says, it will look like as if the buildings are making few steps towards the sea and then they disappear in the ground. The very same description gives uh, Utrok Vyacheslav in terms of how the Statue of uh, Liberty will be taken down with explosives. Interestingly enough, he uh, describes the same thing. He says uh, they will make the explosion and then it will appear as if the statue makes few steps forward and only after that it collapses. By the way, both prophecies, those of Vyacheslav Krishininikov and those of Gottfried uh, from Verdenberg, they were made more or less at the same time, but it is very unlikely that the two people could have uh, had a connection due to the Iron Curtain, uh, which was uh, still dense at that time. So, according to Trok Vyacheslav Krasheninikov, anyway, all cities and all tall buildings will be devastated. If not by hurricanes and wars, they, then certainly by earthquakes. Nothing tall will stand. And that uh, makes me wonder why does he describe then uh, the event of the statue being blown up as something separate and standing out from the rest of the events, maybe because probably it uh, would happen earlier than the other things. I don't know. The wool of North America will be like a village. Florida will have disappeared. Washington and New York will have been utterly destroyed by earthquakes. This will happen at 3 o'clock in the morning when most people are asleep. The big centers of population will now be just gigantic graveyards with everything buried beneath the rubble from the skyscrapers. The cities of North America will never be rebuilt. The individual American states would have split away from each other in the chaos and will be more or less self-governing for two and a half years. The famine will persist for a few seasons and the people will find out that their gold is useless. It will be trampled upon the streets. Most of the states will try to make separate contracts with Central Europe to buy food. Vyacheslav Kosheninikov also mentioned that uh, eventually the states will uh, disintegrate and uh, will be, for all practical purposes, uh, different countries. Here, a couple of the uh, numerous orthodox prophecies explaining that America will be relatively badly hit by the natural disasters. So, in the previous episode, we saw that America steps in relatively late uh, into the scene of the Third World War. 
And maybe the reason is explained in this dream. Here also it mentions that America is uh, simply too weak at that time. And the reason is that uh, it lost all its power in a war in the Middle East. Probably this is exactly the war which uh, Gottfried von Wenderberg mentioned. That's how he described it. And maybe that's why Drog Vyacheslav mentioned that actually America will be trying to avoid the war with China. Maybe that's why it will withdraw all its troops from Europe prior to the war. And eventually, as we read in the previous video, they do intervene and do help Germany and conquer parts of China while its army is away. So during that period and possibly even during the Arabic War, which could precede it if uh, Gottfried from Wenderbeck was right. There will be some attempts uh, for armies to attack the territory of US as, as such, but they will be unsuccessful. But still there could be some uh, warfare, although the loss of life due to it will be minimal compared to the natural disasters. Surely the Chinese will uh, try to invade through Alaska, that uh, came, I believe, in a couple of prophecies, but they will be soon repelled. They will not reach far. And now I would like to remind you from the previous video what happened uh, when the American army took over large parts of China. There was a chaos because at that time uh, there was like a civil war in America itself. And for some reason the people decided to kill the farmers and the people who had some sort of small businesses, even in the food supply chain or restaurants. And thus, the, uh, and thus effectively Americans caused their starvation. Now, that I can predict happening in America even without the prophecies and even without the world war because it starts already on a small scale. Uh, So-called fighters for human rights are actually destroying peaceful neighborhoods. And the vipers are thus just testing the waters. Now they saw, okay, the people buy that, so they will organize surely more of this. So looking particularly at this episode of the people themselves destroying those who feed them, the farmers and the food suppliers. Do you believe that such unbelievable fiasco will happen due to the thought forms of a very small fraction of world's population which currently believes in these prophecies? Or will it actually happen due to the level of wisdom of the people who do these things. Please do not be misled by people who are telling you to ignore the messages of the proven prophets, which are actually messages from God. This is how such calls to ignore them look like. Do not be misled by the modern New Age sounding formulation of these calls to ignore. Be very careful because these calls may even come from otherwise good New Age gurus who even have taught practices which actually help people in reality. Don't forget that they learned these practices mostly from the East. So after learning few basic meditational techniques from the East, these people decided that they have outgrown their gurus. Now they think that they are smarter than the prophets, than Christ who, are, who is sending such warnings and Allah and the spirituality of the East which teaches the law of karma. These modern gurus are effectively telling you to turn your back and not to listen to all of that. These are the people who effectively demonize karma by telling you that whatever you believe in currently that's what will happen. And that's of course uh, preposterous and ridiculous. And just uh, look around. People barely get what they want in life. Do not fall for these Dajjalic philosophies. They are very dangerous. And they are preached very skillfully under the banner that you manifest your reality. Now that is true. But you do not uh, manifest it only with the thoughts of the last week or the last month but with all your thoughts of all your incarnations ever. And also when you manifest that reality, 
all the content of your entire subconscious is also being manifested. So do not be misled, your current beliefs and desires are only one of the factors, not everything. Of course, uh, certain rural-only areas will be much safer than others. Canada and Alaska being some of them, I hope not all. I am leaving the link to that uh, collection of visions in the description. And in case you are interested, you could use the word search option of your browser to find more about certain areas. These uh, local predictions, however, should not be taken over seriously, so to say. Because uh, it is uh, more reasonable to expect that, let's say, 30-60% of them will happen. Because many prophecies are conditional to start with, not everything is set in stone. And second of all, sometimes the own psyche of the seer may intervene in properly describing an event, even if they see it uh, relatively correctly. Exactly as events in the past, uh, many people have been at the same event, but yet they describe it in a completely different manner. And the third reason for which they should not be taken as an absolute uh, future is that uh, some of the visions in that book might be not genuine, like people who want to get famous at any cost or religious fanatics who even deceive themselves. As far as the Bible, it seems that the destruction of America or the destruction of uh, New York is described as uh, the end of Babylon. It says it will be destroyed by fire. It will be also rebuilt and then destroyed again. So the biblical description of Babylon perfectly matches America and America only, and mainly New York. And here are some of the points uh, explaining why is that so. And uh, most probably the biblical description is that of the destruction of uh, New York once or twice during the wars. But if it is meant uh, in the sense of destruction of the entire America, then the fire from the skies could be the comet as well. Babylon is described as uh, having a symbol of a lady, probably the Statue of Liberty, even her horns are mentioned. And uh, she sits on many waters and is the richest the nation of the world and etc. And etc. I think it's kind of pointless to prove that it is indeed uh, New York, which is the biblical Babylon, because all uh, cities, especially all coastal cities and all capitals, will be surely destroyed, along with the all high buildings, anyway, anywhere. All this description of uh, severe hardship is not um, meant to make anybody depressed, because from higher perspective, uh, this will be like an extreme adventure for the soul, and nothing more than that. In the set books of Jane Roberts and many other sources, it is said that uh, the earth, the domain of the earth, is for very brave souls who want to try out extreme adventures, something like the bungee jumping uh, corner of the universe. Once you, as your higher self, have decided to participate, in this adventure, you will, exactly as uh, you may plan a train trip, but once the train takes off, you for some reason decide to make other plans. Although you have uh, chosen absolutely voluntarily to go for the train ride at the first place, this doesn't mean that if you change your plans during the trip, the train will stop without a station only for you to get off. 
the train doesn't stop for the whims of the passengers, otherwise there will be disruption in the entire itinerary. All the other passengers will not reach on time. If the train is too late, then uh, he may meet another train traveling in the opposite direction on its uh, own trail. That's why there are certain rules when one travels with train. And in the same way, the ways of karma are quite uh, complex, actually. By enrolling the adventure of the end times, you may have uh, contracts with other souls to interact in special ways during the end times. So you cannot cancel the adventure because that will uh, cause much disturbance in the theater play of other souls as well. So those who are preaching to you that uh, if you just imagine that nothing will happen and as they say, draw positive images and you will delete everything. Such type of people stubbornly refuse to learn about the law of karma. They refuse to read about the thousands of proven cases of reincarnation and the wisdom which the people have brought with them from them. Because the karma deniers simply don't want to be responsible for their actions. So we mentioned this uh, mystic Babylon from the Bible, who is also described as a prostitute. And most commentators, or at least many, see that as symbolic representation of the Statue of Liberty in New York. And indeed, the description fits very well. She is described as uh, having horns and surrounded by great waters. Well, certainly the Statue of Liberty is uh, surrounded by uh, great waters. She's uh, in the port of New York. And also she represents the uh, goddess uh, Libertas, uh, also known as, under various names, Inanna, Ishtar, Isis. And this uh, very same goddess is mentioned as the goddess of the prostitutes in ancient times, in few texts. So everything uh, fits very well. And, of course, uh, the most important parallel is that the description of the land, of the country of Babylon, fits perfectly the United States only. But why uh, would they mention, in particular, the destruction of the Statue of Liberty? Otrok Vyacheslav also mentioned that specifically. But uh, also the Bible and he himself explicitly said that anyway all coastal cities and all capitals and all major cities, all places with sky skyscrapers will be destroyed anyway. So why specify and give more attention to the Statue of Liberty? Because the Statue of Liberty itself is an important symbol and the event of its destruction will also be an important symbol. So currently the statue is one of the most prominent symbols in the entire world of democracy and to what a sad state of affairs have we brought ourselves by allowing to have our very definition of what freedom is be distorted beyond recognition by the pedophilian blood drinkers. It was not a gift a friendship from the people of France. It was uh, a gift from uh, French Freemasons to their American brothers. It is a symbol of uh, enslaving humanity with the talks of uh, liberta, freedom. And the dramatic end of this uh, idol will be a sign of the end of the era in which the meaning of all beautiful things is distorted and turned upwards. The destruction of the idol will symbolize the end of the era in which devil worshippers can set up enormous deities of their dark cults and the masses will worship and admire them without asking any questions, making the statue a focus of attention, of the worldwide attention and a symbol is also a form of worship. This is that uh, very same goddess Isis, after which they named their project in Syria. 
Actually, one viewer told me, why are you insulting the Mother Goddess, the Divine Mother, by saying that there were ancient cults, cannibal cults devoted to Isis, who is the Divine Goddess? Actually, the information that they named Isis after a blood-drinking goddess which they worship, this uh, modern pedophile dark forces, that is from Paramonov and the Statue of Liberty, which is most definitely fully Masonic project top to bottom, is a confirmation of it. So if this ancient goddess Ishtar, Inanna, uh, Libertas, Isis, she is very well known to be the Divine Mother, that is her identity as a goddess. Then how come these Masons and uh, Dark, dark Side are worshipping her? This is a very good question which, which has to be understood properly if one wants to understand better the magic fabric from which this uh, world is built. The exact ancient uh, rituals of Isis, we don't know about them. I mean, the Masons still practice something, but it is uh, not uh, published, at least openly. But we have something very similar in India, which is uh, public uh, knowledge and is still practiced, although the names are completely different. Like uh, Saraswati, Durga, uh, all these are forms of Devi who is without any uh, doubt Shakti, an expansion of the Divine Mother. Lalita, Tripura Sundari, Lakshmi, Saraswati, all these are the benevolent white forms of the Divine Mother and they are also dark ones which are in no way less divine than the other incarnations and these are uh, Kali, uh, Dumvati, Matangi, Bhairavi, Baglamukhi, Pratyangira and many many others. Although it is uh, not practiced to sacrifice people to them, still they sacrifice animals. It is not much practiced nowadays but it still happens and certainly we have historic records that it was done in the past. So this confusion of uh, how come uh, an incarnation of the benevolent God can have such forms, this is a predicament which happens to people who only see uh, things from the black and white world. But actually the reality is very colorful and very complex. I will try to make more videos about this very interesting topic but it is also it, it requires lots of learning to understand all this one needs to understand the explanation of what god is as it is in the set books of jane roberts and also you can see my video uh, called is god a tulpa and these uh, two sources will start casting some light on the seeming contradiction. Actually there is a lot of uh, historic and modern examples of uh, demons also worshipping uh, forms of the benevolent god and uh, our modern Freemasons are also a perfect example. They are primarily Saturn worshippers but they also have other deities because what they know more than the general public is uh, basics of magic. And by the way, animal sacrifice is uh, widely practiced still both in Christianity and Islam. They still uh, sacrifice lambs in some monasteries. I don't think this is uh, given by Christ. I think this is a relatively modern addition to Christianity. But anyhow, my point is it is going on in most religions, uh, not just uh, in Hinduism. Also in Islam, the Qurban, the same thing. So in the Nina prophecies, uh, she makes a parallel between the way people in America and people in the East 
and especially in Russia, will be accepting uh, the mark of the beast. Both East and West, most of the people will first accept the new passports, the first phase of the mark of the beast, and then the second. There will be no difference in that terms. But uh, while those in uh, America, their attitude mostly will be I don't care about any philosophy, can't you see that I have no food and shelter? In the East, in Russia, everybody by then will be very well informed about the mark of the beast and even those who accept it will know very well what they are getting stamped with. But still, they will do it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months of uh, good-looking meals. That's how cheap they will sell their soul. Even if they understand everything very well and even if they are otherwise intelligent people. And why would an intelligent person do such a blunder? Because ultimately, uh, birds of feather flock together and those who have... Uh, in their psyche, these underlying demonic patterns, they will find an excuse and pretext to take the mark. And that's why in this uh, couple of short years that it seems we have before the tribulation starts, the wisest uh, way to prepare is to say no to all addictions, especially alcohol, because that's a black magic substance and that uh, gradually replaces the divine human patterns with demonic patterns in the psyche. The TV addiction is uh, equally or even more dangerous. And in the second part of a video called Who Built the Megalithic Nuragis of Sardinia, I suggest a step-by-step -step program for both beginners and very advanced spiritual people for a practical spiritual things, a practice which one can do to purify oneself as much as possible because that's what uh, really will increase your chances to make it to the new world, to the new age. It is not uh, the preppers who will survive, it is the pure people. And by preppers I mean uh, in the popular sense, not the spiritual preppers, the genuine spiritual preppers, they have the highest chance to survive. And the practice which I outlined is safe. It is applicable also for agnostics and even atheists. Based on my personal observations, having lived uh, many years both in the East and in the West, there is no drastic uh, difference in, t in terms of uh, low or high consciousness level. But there is a lot of difference how the parasites achieve that level. While, let's say, in Russia, it is mostly done by the alcohol and to a relatively, comparatively uh, lesser extent, the lies from the media. And in the West, it is exactly the opposite. It is the confusion from the media that plays the major role. A practical illustration of what I said about the media is RT, the uh, Russian government curated news agency. Is it really independent and free? Uh, definitely not, because uh, it glorifies Putin. But at the same time, a lot of the rest of the coverage that they do is actually quite honest. And the overall quality, the overall honesty of the presentation is equivalent that to the what in America people call alternative media. A question from Fof Bankers. Their Prime Minister is uh, planning concentration camps next March. Actually, I don't know from which uh, country are you coming from. I don't know anything about uh, these camps yet. But as far as the prophecies uh, are concerned, and I did my best to read them to you, you should not be ending up there, especially next March. There seemed to be very little chance for that. First of all, 
uh, driving people in mass in the camps. I've heard that in the prophecies only for Russia and only for the religious people. And even that will happen after the new absolutely demonic government takes over. The current government is building the camps for them but the new one will use them. Yes, uh, the laws uh, which declare us, uh, those who don't uh, take vaccination as enemies of the people, are already accepted, uh, at least in, European, in the European Union for sure. So we are in that category and that is there in the prophecies. But what is uh, most likely that they will do next is to introduce the new passports and only vaccinated people will be able to travel free. And without that uh, new card or passport, one could be denied uh, employment and maybe even public services and most obviously travel. At least based on the prophecies, that is uh, the worst that can be expected in the initial stage. And most likely not next March. I think it's too early. In one of the previous episodes, I read you that prophecy where they explained that those who are danger to the public will be monitored very close, but they will be let free until the very final stage of the tribulation, when they will issue more or less, it seems, a worldwide order for imprisonment and killing of those people. But that will last only weeks, and uh, by then there will be countless signs confirming that these prophecies are true, and this timeline is true, and then you will know it is time to go to the forest if you really want to be safe. And most likely that uh, final stage will be some, I don't know, 10-12 years from now, not next March. But again, the situation will differ very much from country to country. And then we ask, where are the warriors or the people that will stand and help dry this enemy into the sea? Well, that's why we have uh, the prophecies, which are telling us that uh, there will be nothing like this on the horizon for the entire tribulation at all. And uh, the person, that is Christ, who will drive the enemy into the sea, will appear at the time when all hope seems to be lost completely and uh, marked people are celebrating their victory with rivers of alcohol and uh, pedophilian orgies and grilled people on the menu it says that you feel very very alone well you shouldn't feel that way if you want to be honest with yourself because all the sources of prophecy promised us that God will not abandon his people and he will hear their prayer. And that's why we have the prophecies to know what kind of help to expect during the tribulation. It will be only on personal basis, case to case. At the very end, after Armageddon, during the judgment, only after that Christ and the angels will openly walk amongst the people. Next is about the uh, criminal pedophile network. He says it will be taking over the planet during the tribulation. They have taken over uh, decades ago, not only in America, here in the European Parliament, we have the same guys. I've heard it in a discussion or recorded their official discussion. People were protesting why their criminal cases are kind of not being attended to. That's because uh, uh, these are people who have sold their souls to the devils or incarnated devils themselves. And they have these inbuilt demonic patterns that uh, make such things for them to feel natural. And towards the end of the tribulation, many of those who take the mark of the beast, they will feel the same urge from inside. And if you don't want to find yourself in that club, that's why I'm, I'm advising you now that you have some time, say no to alcohol because this is a precursor magic substance that will take you there in 10 years or so. And yes, they are promoting all kinds of uh, nonsense like uh, they are transhumanistic ideas, uh, as you say, cybernetic technologies and this stuff. 
That's why I have one cure for all of them together. Do not watch TV. And this will automatically free time for you for this simple meditation practice about which I also have a video. Otherwise, if we continue watching TV and then we need programs and explanations how to deprogram ourselves from the sewage we have just swallowed, well, was it really wise to swallow it in the first place to start with? So how will they manage to groom the people in such a way that in 10 years, let's say, they will start accepting uh, pedophilia and cannibalism as something normal? Of course, the main thing will be accepting the mark of the beast, which will start with the new passports, then one's soul will be opened for possession, that will be the main factor. But there will be other factors as well, as for example the subliminal messages from the mass media. People will watch TV and they will think it's some sort of entertainment or humor. The word pedophilia may not even be mentioned. They will not understand how they get groomed. And also twisting uh, the definition of the people of what is moral will be essential. And that's why since years I'm warning that the karma deniers are walking a very dangerous path. And the twisting will be very subtle, like here, listening to the words of the prophets, it's called drawing awful images into reality. At the end of the day, this type of uh, people preach that there is no reaction to your actions, you can do whatever you like if you feel like. And this type of uh, belief system is a fertile soil for pedophilia, cannibalism and all kinds of hell to grow and flourish. Here is a colorful comment. Gary says the main purpose of life is to be food for reptiles. I would personally strongly disagree. This is not what the great spirit of the Amazon, Ayahuasca, my teacher, showed me. According to her, the main purpose is to learn how to become a white magician or angel. Some people would say ascended person or benevolent protector shaman and those souls whose bodies end up in the reptilian restaurant as a fancy dish they will be looking at that from heaven and the main purpose is not the food supply of the reptilians although god has taught also for their food supply and this is the provision he made but it also serves for the soul who will be watching the feast from heaven to finally learn that it is not a very good idea to roast all those uh, chicken and cats and dogs and lambs and calves. So if you become a vegetarian that will uh, somewhat reduce your chances to see the restaurant from such a perspective. But yet will not eliminate the chances completely in case you have uh, not been a vegetarian for all your lives in all your incarnations and also in many cases such a reptilian restaurant episode can be a result of uh, almost any type of violent karma of any of your incarnations. And the idea behind after watching that uh, feast in the restaurant is to give up all ideas of uh, violence in your psyche. Like, for example, in the last lines of your comment, you're telling me prepare to fight, arm yourself and prepare to fight the cannibal orcs of hell. That could be a call for self-defense or it could be an expression of uh, violence lurking somewhere in your uh, subconscious for which uh, you want to find excuses. I cannot say from here because I don't see your psyche. But normally uh, souls who have outgrown this um, stage of learning in which they have to see the episode in the reptilian restaurant, they are already divorced of all kinds of uh, excuses for violence which are so commonly entertained by most modern people. Next, Gary says that the God and all his children are evil. I'm not convinced, Gary. I had a vision about which I'll tell you in the episode about the judgment. The vision took place somewhere early summer this year 
and uh, I was shown why exactly I had to go personally through such terrible suffering and uh, physical pain in my life already. I'm not talking about some future possibilities. And I even protested in front of God. I said, why did you make me in such a way that I will have even the option to do such evil things in another incarnation and then suffer so terribly? This, this should not be allowed, I said. And he immediately said, you, you could have been restricted, but then you wouldn't be a free person. You wouldn't be as free as me. He said, I just gave to all my particles the freedom I have myself. So, dear Gary, based not only on the words of the saints, but also the overall impression which I had uh, from God from this uh, conversation, he looked a very honest and reliable person. And most likely this is uh, just the case. Exactly as he said, freedom comes with responsibility. But amongst modern people it is more popular to want only the freedom and uh, when the time comes to taste your own bitter medicine, they don't believe in God or karma anymore. Next, Gary says that uh, they, God and his children, set up wars deliberately. Yes, exactly, and that's what the prophets say. They will set up these uh, terrible wars during the tribulation so that uh, many people can get uh, purified from heavy karma which keeps them anchored and they cannot uh, progress further to the higher realms. But once this anchor is removed, they can fly up high then after that. This is exactly what many prophecies say. Gary continues... War is the only option if you want to live. For some, Gary, uh, now I'm repeating what I've read in the set books of Jane Roberts, which are the highest form of the Vedas, according to me. They are not uh, the only uh, way to live. You can live on, in places in the, of the universe where there is no war. Souls incarnate on earth during times of war by their own will. And that is only if they decide... Yeah, again according to set this is not my personal opinion if they uh, want to make progress very quickly countless other souls uh, he describes them as something like uh, lazy they don't want to face their bad karma ever and uh, simply linger in uh, very mild and uneventful spheres of existence compared to the earthly realm. It's exactly when you throw seeds, not all of them grow, not all of them uh, germinate. Some of them just uh, prefer to remain like lazy and dormant. They don't want to develop. Yet on the other hand, Set also says that uh, extreme uh, suffering and extreme duality as experienced on Earth, especially currently, this is not the only way to grow, but he says that it is a way to grow and some brave souls do get on that train. Joseph asks, uh, which deity? Well, uh, when I say God, probably I mean like the source of all incarnations, what in Hinduism is uh, called Brahman. But also in the context of the end times, you could say I also mean Jesus Christ, which is most probably also Kalki in Vedic words, because he is the presiding deity of our times and the personification of that very same Brahman. Rebecca writes in the comments that she is surprised that I believe in voting. Rebecca, you can see my video called How to Take Down the Empire of uh, Evil and see that uh, it is not really true to say that I believe in voting, only partially, let's say. First of all, the situation is radically different in different countries, so it is wrong to generalize. In different places, uh, they can or they care enough to rig the elections to different extent. Uh, Rebecca, we have here in the European Parli Parliament a couple of normal people even, who are openly 
showing the real colors of the pedophilian devils and calling for sensible politics, really very brave souls. If everything was 100% rigged, those people would not be there. Also, after living in many countries, I have to tell you that uh, despite the rigging uh, in overall who wins and who doesn't, does correspond to the opinion of the common people around. Not just based on surveys, because those are rigged as well, but also based on uh, really seeing the people around me. So I know for sure that uh, lots of uh, fraud, election fraud is going on, but I don't think it can uh, reach as far as, uh, I don't know, 60-70%. I have not seen anything like this. So the people do have a small and a limited choice and they are not making a wise use of that as well. That is my point when I talk about voting. In one of the prophecies which I read, a monk talked, he saw a group of uh, good politicians actually, who with great difficulty, after many strenuous hours of uh, negotiations, managed to prevent a couple of more wars during this uh, uh, pre-tribulation during the Third World War, when half of the world gets destroyed. Without those negotiations, maybe it would have been two-thirds uh, destroyed. So, for example, where I live, most likely there is no rigging. The level of general consciousness here is uh, relatively high. People elected uh, milder devils. <laughs> compared to some other uh, head of states around the world. And that's why, for example, the lockdown here, they handled it uh, relatively well. Yes, they say we are making a lockdown to appease the uh, devils from the European Union, but uh, when we actually read uh, the rules of the lockdown, it is almost nothing, only the the garment stores were closed, otherwise people were allowed to go around outside and go to work and do pretty much everything. Now, next you say that there is no difference between the parties. That is, of course, absolutely true in general, but yet, you know, when we look into the details, uh, there are slight differences, exactly like in hell. Hell is hell everywhere, but still there are seven degrees of hell. And when you are there, it really matters in which uh, you are. And since the tribulation is, will be kind of a glimpse of hell, it will matter in which uh, uh, stage of uh, hell we uh, land. And uh, over the years, I've posted uh, proof that the left-wing parties are uh, of the lower and uh, more strict levels of hell, so to say, while the right wings are the soft-hearted devils. And the more people support the left-wing parties and their ideas, which is a very important note, because uh, during the upcoming revolutions, those same ideas could be branded under a different name. So to the extent uh, people support uh, the left-wing devils, the more se severe the tribulation will be. And this uh, threat that uh, the left-wing parties are far more uh, closely married to the uh, devilish agenda, it also came up in a couple of the verified prophecies, so it is uh, most definitely true. And understanding this uh, can save many lives, because if more people understand this, it is as simple as that. They will refuse to take part in uh, their uh, centrally instigated revolutions and go on the streets and fight with their own relatives. Because uh, people will be tricked into participating in those extremely bloody revolutions with uh, left-wing and socialist and communist slogans. But those who have been wise and have taken the prophecies seriously, they will know the slogans are empty and they will not go on the streets and they will not participate in these uh, suicidal revolutions. So speaking about voting in particular, 
I uh, encountered it two times in the prophecies. First, when uh, they will be electing the Antichrist as the head of the renewed European Union, at that time the monk who wrote the prophecy mentioned explicitly that they will be counting the votes very carefully when they vote for one king of the world. And most likely exactly that's uh, how it's gonna be, because the devil, exactly like the Lord, the most important for him is our sincerity, because uh, what he is ultimately after, the sole possession of his uh, sons, the sons of the Dajjal, that goes by the cosmic laws. Fake voting will not give him the right of possession, and that's why the voting most likely at that time will be absolutely genuine. And the second mention was from the Nina prophecies of Russia, and she describes the voting for that uh, new, absolutely devilish government which will take over shortly before uh, World War III. And again she said the voting will be absolutely genuine, and these uh, new blood-drinking monsters, compared to which the current monsters of Russia are sweet kittens, the blood drinkers will take over again with fully legitimate voting. That's what will happen when people do not listen to the prophecies. Kaji Kaji Katil Gyorgi Kaji Jogar 